Hey everyone, Hans here. Hope everyone's doing well. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, pain, if you will. Not exactly the most joyous of topics, uh, but what can you do? I think it's important to bring this up once in a while. Uh, and there is actually a recent conversation I've had with a few friends that led me to, yeah, I suppose think about this. And thus wanting me to share my thoughts, as I always do, right? So where to begin? The sort of pain I'm talking about is the kind that everyone in a society today lives in through denial. So it is actually self-inflicted pain. It is not inflicted by you know outside forces, external forces if you will. Although they have something to do with it. How am I going to lay this out a bit clearer? You might say that an external force, you know, forces you to have a, a pass for you to go where you please. And that essentially everyone's freedom is being curbed. The pain is inflicted by the lack of freedom, you might say. But that is... Mm, this is not entirely what I want to talk about. I'm talking because if you face that, if you face that, oh, this external force is hurting me by curbing my freedoms to simple things, you know, go for a walk, go have a drink in the bar for those who like doing that, for to uh, hang out with the children or just hang out with other people in general. But then being forced to wear all kinds of rubbish. If you face that, if you can honestly say to yourself, <clears throat> yeah, this is not what I want, and it hurts me that I'll get in trouble if I do if I refuse to do this, then the pain, if you will, is external. However, there are other types of people, right? who will wear the accoutrements, they will follow the rules, but they pretend it's not there. They pretend that these new rules essentially are a good thing, that it is nothing to worry about, that everything is just fine as it always is and it's for our good, etc, etc. But deep down, these people know that is not the case. But because if they face the reality that their freedoms are being curbed, something inside of them demands that they do something about it. And I'm perhaps being a bit harsh, maybe, but I'm going to use the word cowardice, is that they are too cowardly to face the reality of things. They are too cowardly to face the reality of things because they are too cowardly to take action upon the perceived reality that they face. Seems like a bit of a mouthful, but it's really simple. Right? <clears throat> I think everyone can follow, or should I give an example? Let's say for a few. You know, let's say for young people, you know, to whom this is a first. Uh, it's a bit of an extreme example, but let's go with someone who is enslaved. Let's say you're a, a white French guy in, let's say, the 17th century, and uh, the Barbary pirates, <coughs> excuse me, the Barbary pirates are going along the coastline to enslave people. And they so happen to catch this French white guy. They pick him up, they clamp him in chains, and off to the you know, to the realm of the Barbary Pirates it is, where he can, I don't know what they made him do, I guess build castles for him, teach, uh, teach their children, be, you know, a throwaway soldier, a janissary, like the Ottomans, they were also very fond of that, you know, stealing uh, white children, raising them to be janissaries, a bit besides the point. But let's say you're the French guy that we're going with here, an example, Let's imagine then that he says, 
he could choose to face that, oh, I'm enslaved now, I need to do something about this. And then, you know, all kinds of scenarios come up in his mind. Being brave, doing something about it. And that would be a very good thing to do, in my opinion. But let's say this guy is a chicken and he is uh, unwilling, he's unwilling to face the reality. So he says, oh, this chain around my, around my leg with the iron ball attached to it. That's, that's just so I cannot fall from the ship that easily. They're doing it for my good. <laughs> or <clears throat> what else is there? Like this, this. The whip on my back, that's just, um, <clears throat> that's just to motivate me to work a bit harder so the job gets done, right? It's all for the better. But here's the thing, right? To be a slave <clears throat> will hurt any healthy, I guess in this example, white person. Other peoples perhaps as well. Not my problem in the sense that the, you know, every people has the right to take care of itself. I'm just looking after my own. And everyone else, I'm indifferent to it. I bear them as much joy as they can muster. And as far as they're hurt, well, I'm indifferent to it. As sure as they are indifferent to mine. Or maybe even enjoy mine hurt. My people's hurt. Anyways. Uh, so yeah. He... The, the slavery in and of itself is a painful experience, right? And that is an external force, the Barbary pirates in this example, who are asserting hurt unto those they enslave, on the French guy they enslaved. I think we can all understand that. But the one who is brave, the example where the Frenchman is brave, is the is where it remains external. <clears throat> you know, there can be physical hurt done unto the Frenchman in that slavery, but inside here, in his head, in his mind, maybe his heart too, if you will, his spirituality, there he remains untouched, because that is something they cannot quite touch. However, the example where the Frenchman is cowardly, because he knows that you know, deep down he understands he is enslaved, but he's going to pretend he is not, and that everything is just fine. You know, as his new life now is, if you will. The Barbary pirates, let's say, they keep inflicting more and more injury onto them, because they're cruel people, they're slavers, <clears throat> you know, they're despicable. So... Let's say, you know, it's a chain at first and, you know, he can still say to himself, oh, that's because I stay on the ship better or, oh, that whip, that's just to make my job easier because I work harder that way. Let's say it keeps being more vicious at some point, like they're taking his rations away and they're starting to say, you know, suddenly it's only lentil soup or something. It's just, oh, well, you know, that's the, that's a vegan diet. That's good for my health, right? <laughs> I don't know. Or... Um, and then he starts starving, but then, oh, you know, his mind start, his physical mind starts deteriorating a bit as well. However, because he just keeps saying to himself that, oh, it's all fine, it's all well, so that he hasn't con doesn't need to confront himself with taking action and doing something risky to stop being enslaved, he starts going mad. Does that make sense? He starts going absolutely crazy. And I believe extreme, pardon me, as extreme as that example perhaps seems to some. It's an historical one. If you don't believe me, you don't have to. Just go look it up yourself. <clears throat> but the pain there, initiated by an external force, is largely still self-inflicted. He is hurting himself by denying reality. And here is where I suspect you know, he is going to get depressed. He is going to maybe even start talking to himself, you know, like that, but in that unhealthy way. It's not like, mm, should I do this or should I do that? You know, contemplating life more like, like uh, you create some sort of disassociative disorder. 
right? Not quite gender dysphoria, but another sort of disassociative disorder that he is, that his mind is not in this body or whatever the hell. <clears throat> Just fleeing further and further away from reality, I suppose until his end. Who here thinks it's gonna be a good ending? I'm gonna leave that up to you to decide. But I suspect that even though I would argue the situation, the contemporary situation around the time that this video is made is not as bad, there are still many who behave as such. They fool themselves, if you will, or they think they fool themselves. And when there are others who come and they confront these people with reality, they even get angry, right? They even get vicious. And slowly but surely they keep inflicting more and more pain unto themselves, <clears throat> again until a grim end. And perhaps dragging good people who do notice reality for what it is with them. Now, what's the entire purpose of this video? I just found it very interesting and maybe it is to you too I I mean I cannot say that right that is for yourself to decide but it might just help some of us see things that they weren't seeing before or know you know what to make up of the mind of others perhaps a little And maybe also to differentiate the pain caused by external forces and then that there are indeed many who inflict pain unto themselves. <clears throat> maybe going back to the example of the slaver then, you know, ending it on a, on a fun note. The slavery is always going to hurt. We understand that, right? Slavery, bad. Always will hurt. Denial means you remain that slave and you're inflicting even more hurt onto yourself on top of the hurt of the external force of the slavery so which way <clears throat> which single only way is it to stop the hurt i'm pretty certain you can guess it indeed it's to stop being a slave it is the power of choice no matter you cannot foretell what fate will befall you, but the choice to say, I will not be hurting anymore. And in fact, those other people enslaved on the ship, I don't want them to be hurting more. Can I do something about that and then act on that? That is the only route to stop hurting and feel healthy again, feel whole again, heal feel hail again are you gonna be that brave man if you will how are you then going to face those on the ship who are living that false reality again it's the power of choice personally I respect people's choices myself if they choose to live in denial then do so but don't expect anything from me. Those who... Because, you know, here's the thing. If they deny reality, they will deny what I have to bring for them anyways. They will be unappreciative. And why should I do something for someone who is going to be unappreciative of it? Screw that. And I definitely disap... You know, yeah. And then as far as the... Hmm. And that is what the Frenchman would do right if he is brave and smart. He will be around all these other slaves and the ones who agree with him to be brave, who choose to be brave along with him, doesn't matter what necessarily, you know, what king they prefer <laughs> or what merchant guild they're from and blah blah blah, which fishing village they're from, no, what wine they prefer to drink, doesn't matter. What matter is, they want to get off the ship, they want to get out of the herd. That is a good thing to focus on together. 
You don't even necessarily need to like each other all that much. So long as that common goal gets you out of the slavery, right? And then, either way, the slavers will have no choice. Once the slaves decide to be brave, they will have two choices. They let them run away, or they assert violence onto the slaves. Basically, as you know, make, you know, commit even more crimes, if you will. Now, in every good story, the villain always chooses violence because people just like a good, a good, um, a good bit of fisticuffs, I suppose, <laughs> a bit of swashbuckling. <laughs> and I suppose let's say that. The Barbary pirates in this example, you know, they see the slaves, they're like breaking their chains somehow and they uh, they maybe push a few over the edge already. But the remaining Barbary pirates are like, what is this? No. And they pull out their their scimitars, their, sa uh, their sabers, no, their scimitars. And it's going to be, I suppose, yeah, a bit dangerous. Not all the slaves that are brave may make it. But I can tell you this much. Being brave. It is the will. It's again the choice. To face even death. That is easy to say when you're safe and sound in the green like me. I know. However, I believe it is the reality of things as well. And this is all about facing reality, right? They don't need to, the slaves do not need to throw themselves on the scimitars either, right? Run away, jump over the ship yourself and swim to the shore if you think you can. Wreck the ship before they take you up, whatever. So long as the slavery ends. Yet there will be those who will survive as well. No matter how it ends, for each individual. And that is why it counts. That is why it matters. Because those people will return to their lives and live it out happily ever after, hopefully. At minimum, they'll live it out absent of the pain that was about to be inflicted on them. Hey, a thing that matters. To say no to the cruelty of external forces and say no to self-inflicted harm through denial. And to say to yourself, to have the self-respect, that's also a big one. To actually have the self-respect to thump your chest for a second and say, you know what, I'm a pretty good guy. I might have made mistakes in my life, but I do by no means deserve to be treated in such a cruel manner. By useless people who need others to work for them not even at a wage or at a shitty wage because even slaves have to eat right is there something else i can add hmm. maybe a little extra the concept of external and internal is also something i've talked about with a friend and i'm gonna leave him He's gonna make videos in the future himself, or at least I'm trying to encourage him and he seems to... The idea seems to appeal more and more to him, seems to make more sense. I'm gonna let him do it at this time. But we talked also a bit about the external and the internal. And the external, uh, the whole, you know, oh, it's always the other guy that's blaming external forces, but there is in the important aspect also to to realize and it's like when am, when am I making mistakes when am I wrong and I think personally I'm not going to get into it overly much <clears throat> in this video but I believe that's also very important to realize that plays into what I just said right because if you can admit to yourself that you're wrong once in a while of course you know when you're actually wrong, you don't just need to say it. 
it humbles it humbles the ego and that is actually a good thing it makes the ego stronger actually and it will help you face reality and it will help you see things clearer I would argue it takes a bit of practice but yeah and again it's internal it is only you telling yourself you can be wrong here or there if you're saying that you're wrong just because everyone else says so that's again blaming external forces if you will seems a bit complicated but it really isn't you just need to give it go sit underneath a tree if you need that and uh, let the wind brush through your hair close your eyes and then think about it for a second it really does help that's also by the way uh, something that a friend of mine has proposed to me once it really does help <laughs> so yeah hmm. is there anything else I can add mm. times may look scary I am a bit scared myself I suppose but I choose to be brave Partially why I make these videos, right? My face is out there. Anti-wise know my looks. And I know, and I will probably pff, need to watch my back a bit more often than I used to. Although then again, these days having certain fair features, being of the white race is enough to be assaulted and all of that, right? So maybe it isn't that brave after all. What have you? But I still choose. And so can you. And it doesn't need to be big changes all at once. Take your time. Proving yourself. That is the big one. It almost seems like a cliche. It really isn't, however. Just doing right by others is something you do once you've got your own life straightened out. It doesn't need to be 100%, but enough. Enough for you to get by on your own. Then you reach out to others. That's especially for the men among us as for the women um, this may be another video I'll make at some point but I have learned in recent months particularly that women need a lot of women's social activities seem to be based a lot around affection and the anti-white knows that of our women and have been promptly doing their best to take it away from them but that's for another video that's uh, yeah it's also worth contemplating. I'll I'll see if that's going to be for the next one or in a few weeks. All in the middle, I suppose. And uh, I guess I'm going to leave it here. You all have a good one. And bye-bye. Be brave, guys.